Hi everyone, my name is Ken. Welcome to this house. Today we are in St. Louis, Missouri, exploring an Italianate style home. Now this house has seen better days. However, it is just bursting with architectural items that I'm just dying to show you. So I'll go ahead and throw the stats up on the screen. We'll take a look around outside and then we're gonna go explore. Before we go inside, I'd like to take a moment to give a huge shout out to Robert Osterman of Realty Executives of St. Louis for opening the doors to this property for us. You can find the link to his page down in the video description below. Walking inside this home, of course, this is not like many of the other homes that we've explored, but in many ways, it absolutely is. So as we begin to look around the foyer, we can see a built-in niche, we can see the remnants of the original historic staircase and the original millwork that has been left here. And of course, here in St. Louis, many homes that are in this condition have been completely looted and robbed of their historic architectural elements. And many of the doors, transom windows, things like that are still here and still intact. As we make our way into the parlor, let's see some of these original details. We can look up and see the original medallion from which the chandelier is suspended. And we can imagine that at one time, this would have had a more ornate light fixture towards the base. Walking further into this space, we arrive at a fireplace that sits directly across from the door we just entered. And this is absolutely stunning, the detail on here. The fireplace is solid marble and it still has its original cast iron summer cover on it. So let's take a moment to see this and some of these other details in this room before heading through these massive pocket doors right behind me. Now that we've seen the parlor, come on through these giant pocket doors and let's start exploring the dining room. Once again, there is a decorative ornate medallion from which a very similar chandelier is suspended. And over on the far side of the room is another fireplace and this matches the one that we just saw in the parlor. So let's take a moment to see this room and then we're going to move right along. Continuing on, we come through a swinging door and let's pause and take a look at this encasement. We're going to see this a couple more times throughout this house, but let's just really look at the detailing here because this is incredibly ornate. And you can see that this is the same wood type as we can see how evident that is underneath the peeling paint here. Entering this space, I'm not sure if maybe this was the kitchen or the music room. Let me know if you have any ideas as to what this could have been. There's another very ornate fireplace here and we are seeing a different theme this time as we can see some etch work and some different stone types as well as the original summer cover. And of course, there's a large bay window in this area and directly across from the fireplace, come check this out because this is just blowing my mind. This original built-in is still here. So we can take a moment to see this as well as it's historic hardware that is all still intact. Now, continuing on, we arrive at the very back of the house. It appears that next to me, there used to be a wall that separated off the space. And once again, I'm not entirely certain what this room might have been, but we can find some clues. There used to be a fireplace here in the center, or at least a wood burning chimney or something to that likeness. There are also several windows on all sides of this room, as well as a door that would have taken you out to the side of the house. Now, directly behind me is what we might call the maid stair or the back staircase. Unfortunately, this has been completely covered over at the top. So per usual, we'll just take the grand staircase in the front of the house. Now that we've seen the entirety of the first floor of this house, let's go ahead and make our way on up the staircase and check out the second floor. Arriving at the top of these stairs, we now get to see a glimpse as to how the original staircase might have looked, at least the banisters and the null post on the first floor, as we can see a master null post up here on the second floor, as well as the original handrail and the spindles. 
So let's take a closer look at these before circulating around this floor. As we make our way down the stair hall, there are some other details to point out. You know, we saw this while exploring a home in Benton Park, and this is just absolutely beautiful. Let's take a moment to see these details. This will take you up to the third floor. Let's just go ahead and peek our heads up there real fast, and then we'll come back down and keep exploring the second floor. As we come back downstairs, there is a room directly here off the landing. It still has its original hardware as well as a few other details. So let's just take a peek at this and then we'll move on along. Walking into the first room that we'll see, this could have been considered either a library or perhaps part one of part two of the owner's suite here. Here is the original historic fireplace, once again with its summer cover on it. We have more intricate window and casements on this floor now. So let's take a moment to see these before heading along. Walking through here is where the house really starts to get interesting as we can see a lot more clues as to how it might have originally been set up. So let's start taking a look around here. There is a historic chandelier suspended from the ceiling. Now, as our eyes grace the surfaces, we notice that there is a niche and above that, something really amazing, we can see the remnants of a wallpaper banner. And something else that's just really fascinating is the plate cover up here. It looks like it has been hand painted with a scene from nature. Moving along from this space, once again, we arrive at these really thick walls that have these very ornate encasements on them. This time it's unpainted, so we can get an idea of what this original wood would have looked like, especially from what we saw on the first floor. This is another place where things just get really fascinating. We can see layers and layers of wallpaper from decorating over the years. And it's just really interesting to see all of the different motifs that come out in all of these different layers. At least three or four of them are apparent here. Off to this side of the room is a smoker's patio. So we'll just take a quick peek out there and then we'll see the rest of this floor. Off the back of this room is what seems to be either a closet or a bathroom. I would tend to believe that this was probably a bathroom as we can see towel hooks and a towel rack and what might have been a medicine cabinet or perhaps a window that's been covered up as a shelf. You guys let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. Now let's keep moving on and this takes us to the back stair landing of the house. If we turn around, we can see that there's a bathtub here, which is a little random, as we would imagine this more as a place for circulation and not so much the bathroom. But come on through here, and this takes us towards the back of the house. Of course, there's a lot of storage in here, but there's still some things to see. If we look up this way, there is an old fuse box, so we can just take a quick peek at this. Of course, right above us is a working transom window that has been painted over. And this is one of those things that could be really easily restored and put back to functional use. Behind this door is a bridge that takes us out to the old carriage house. The carriage house has been converted into two modern apartments, or at least it's in the process of being converted. So we'll just take a quick glance inside one of these and then we'll keep moving along. Thank you all for joining me on this tour. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time on This House.